This is the power and beauty of the Linux desktop. A collection of open source operating systems with a variety of different desktop environments that can improve your productivity, gaming experience and privacy. Linux is not like your ordinary desktop OS like Windows or Mac OS. It doesn't collect any data about you if you don't want it to, doesn't install applications or show new ads after updates and it's highly customizable. Oh, and did I mention that it runs better than Windows on a lot of older hardware as well? In today's video I'm going to show you how you can install Linux on your personal computer and trust me, it's really not hard. Starting off, the first thing that we need to decide upon is which version of Linux we want to install. There are many different solutions called distributions, which each have their own advantages, update cycles and features. But that doesn't really concern us, since all that matters for us desktop users is the desktop experience, which comes in the form of desktop environments. The most popular ones are being called GNOME, which features a top bar and quick settings menu like on macOS and nowadays also Windows. KD Plasma, which looks a lot like Windows by default, Cinnamon and XFCE. You can easily compare them with online images and usually choose a Linux distribution right on their website. Which one you choose doesn't really matter as we're just out for a proper desktop experience. However, if a website looks a bit advanced or complicated then it's probably not the right choice for you. For this video I'm going to choose the desktop environment KDE Plasma since it seems like a nice entry to the Linux world. From their website I choose get plasma for your device and choose a distribution. My personal favorite is Fedora, though if you are an absolute beginner then the best starting point is Kubuntu. Again, in reality it doesn't matter. All of the provided distros here are identical in terms of how you graphically interact with them. Let's click on learn more and let's download the latest version of Kubuntu from the official website. Now before we go any further, if you plan to install Linux on the PC that you are currently using, if you want to keep your data like images, documents and similar, then now is the time to back them up by uploading them to a cloud service or a local storage device like an external disk or USB stick. Once everything is backed up, what we now need is a USB stick that is at least 8GB in size and a tool called Belina Etcher. For Windows I recommend the portable edition since you don't need to install it. Now let's start flashing by first selecting our Kubuntu ISO we downloaded earlier, select our USB stick and flash it. Beware this erases everything that was previously stored on it. Once it's finished you can either take the USB stick to the PC you want to install Linux on or if it's your current one you can just reboot and enter the UEFI. On most PCs you can get into it with one of the following keys. Just keep rebooting and hammering one of these keys as soon as the PC starts up. Once in the UEFI you want to look for something called boot or boot order. On more recent mainboards you can usually use a mouse. On older ones you have to use a keyboard and follow the instructions. What we want to achieve is that our USB stick is the first device in this list. Then we can close the UEFI with the escape key or a dedicated menu and save the changes. Now when our PC starts booting up we automatically get our Linux installer. Select try or install Kubuntu by pressing enter on your keyboard. If you want to try out Linux before you actually install it on your PC then you can choose try Kubuntu. And if you're unsure if everything will work properly then you should definitely do so. Since I already know that everything will work properly, I'm just going to choose install. Let's first set our keyboard layout. Since I'm using a German one, I'm going to select German. Next I recommend you to tick this check mark, which automatically installs your device drivers if there aren't any open source ones available. This is very important because while Linux is highly compatible with a lot of hardware, it simply cannot cover everything. For the next part it doesn't really matter what you choose, though if you're on a laptop then you might be interested into encrypting your drive in case it ever gets stolen. Be aware that you have to enter a password every time you boot up your PC though. If you have several hard drives in your system you also want to make sure that you select the one that you have decided to use as the system drive. 
Now we can continue with setting our time zone, enter our name, pick a username, password and also a computer name if you want to. Once the installation is finished, we can restart our PC and boot straight into our Linux operating system. Oh, and if you are stuck in an installation loop where it keeps booting into the installer, simply head into the UEFI like before and move the disk to the top of the list again. But otherwise, you have now successfully installed Linux. From this point on, we can just start using our desktop. I usually perform my base setup now, meaning I go into the system settings and deactivate mouse acceleration, since I just find it better this way, set my monitor's refresh rate and activate additional features like FreeSync, and most importantly, switch to dark mode. Much better. Okay, let's talk applications. On Windows, you usually had to download setup files from the internet. On Linux, this is simplified by just using software repositories that can be accessed via the inbuilt store. Once you open it up, you could already start searching for applications and install them. But I recommend you to first check out the settings and activate the Flatpak backend for Discover. Flatpaks are essentially a more universal way how to install applications across many different Linux distributions and come with an even bigger selection of applications. Let's wait a bit and maybe even close and open the store again and at some point you should get something like this. Click on add Flathub, enter your password and wait for a bit. Once Flathub shows up, restart your software store one last time and you should now have access to even more applications than before. You can now go ahead and install browsers, Steam, tools to run Windows applications on Linux and much much more. From this point forward, you now know how to install applications, how to access your system settings and all you have to do if you ever need help is to just search for it online by entering the name of your desktop environment. For example, how to change profile picture in KDE Plasma. You don't need to worry about distributions since the settings are usually there in all of them and if you can't find them right away, you can always search for it. And let's be honest, was it really that hard? We have downloaded a file, flashed it onto a USB stick and if you have ever installed an operating system manually yourself before, followed the same steps like on Windows or macOS, just without any ads, any sign-ins or other recommended settings that need to be accepted. You are now done and all that you are basically doing different than before is how you install your applications and maybe which applications you install since not everything has native Linux support yet. By the way, if you're looking for a good Microsoft Office alternative, then maybe you should take a look at OnlyOffice, which has a very similar look. You now have much more control over your PC again, maybe even revived an old one and you don't need to worry about someone installing random applications on your system anymore. Welcome to the Linux desktop. If you found this video helpful, then please make sure to show it with a like and definitely subscribe to the channel for more useful information about Linux. Thank you for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.